العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم And the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said لقد علمت أو قد علمت أنك تحبين الصلاة معي فأولي I know that you love the الصلاة with me رضي الله عنها وصلاتك في بيتك and your salah however your salah in your house in your home خير لك من صلاتك في حجرتك your salah that you pray in your home in your room خير من صلاتك في حجرتك وصلاتك في حجرتك and your salah in your Home, يعني خير من صلاتك في دارك. It is more preferred than your salah in your home. يعني they are room or they are words in Arabic which are very close to one another. حجوج دار and so on. وصلاتك في دارك خير من صلاتك في مسجد قومك. So the message of Salah Allah Azza started with the closest place to her, which is her room. And your, so he said your salah in your room is better than the salah in your home. And your salah in your home is better than your salah in the masjid of your people. Your salah, what we call a local masjid. The salah that you pray in your home. خير لك من صلاتك في مسجد قومك. The salah that you establish in your home is more better, is better for you than the salah that you pray in your local masjid. Yani the masjid of your people. Meaning in the local masjid. وَصَلَاتُكِ فِي مَسْجِدِ قَوْمِكِ And the salah that you pray in your local masjid, the people, the masjid of your people, خَيْرٌ لَكِ is better for you مِنْ صَلَاتِكَ فِي مَسْجِدِ Then your salah that you would pray, or then the salah that you would pray in your, or in my masjid. طيب Firstly, the Messenger وسلم, started off with what? The most secluded part of her home. The salah that you pray in your room is more virtuous than the salah that you pray in your home. And the salah that you pray, yani going further out and out, the salah that you pray in your home is more virtuous and better than the salah that you pray in your local masjid, in the masjid of your people. Why? Because the local masjid is usually closer than the masjid of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And you can see it now, even in Medina. In Medina, the masjids, prophet, يعني, there are different hay, hay, يعني, different districts or different areas. Every area, طبعاً, has a masjid. So the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying the prayer that you pray in that masjid is better than the prayer that you, or the prayer in your home is better than the salah that you pray in that masjid. And the salah that you pray in that masjid is better than the salah that you would pray in my masjid. And don't forget that the reward of the of praying salah in the masjid's prophet is what? 1,000 times fold. In the in masjid al-haram, Mecca, 100,000. Masjid al-Nabawi, 1,000 times. Like in the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying to her, to this companion, female companion, that the salah that you pray in your masjid, or the local masjid, is more virtuous than the salah that you would pray in your, in my masjid. فَأَمَرَتْ فَبُنِيَ لَهَا مَسْجِدٌ فِي أَقْسَ شَيْءٍ فِي بَيْتِهَا أو شَيْءٍ مِنْ بَيْتِهَا وَأَظْلَمِهِ so she commanded for a house because she understood the intent of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. If we or understanding the hadith as you've just heard it, what do you understand from the mes- from this hadith? The, يعني, I want the sisters to answer. What can be understood from this hadith that we just read out? Not word for word, like in the general meaning of the hadith. I 
ahsant. The more secluded you are, the better it is. And we'll understand what the sister just said exactly as it comes in the hadith. This female companion, radiallahu anha, فَأَمَّرَتْ فَبُونِيَ لَهَا مَسْجِدٌ A masjid was built for her. She commanded for a masjid to be built where? فِي أَقْصَ شَيْءٍ مِنْ بَيْتِهَا In the furthest part of her house, the most secluded part of her house. وَأَظْلَمِهِ And the darkest place in her home. Meaning the most secluded part, which no one will or can see. فَكَانَتْ تُصَلِّ فِيهِ And she used to pray in that, in that place, in that location حَتَّى لَقِيَتِ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى Up until she met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يعني Up until she died So the reason why we said Salat al-Jama'ah Or the Shaykh mentioned Salat al-Jama'ah Is mubah for the sisters or for women Is because that the salah that the woman prays in her home is more virtuous and it is further from fitting it is further from fitting Taban there are other hadith in which the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited the woman from putting on bukhur or atar and so on and then coming out to the masjid or witnessing the salah Lakin that is that has a sin related to it which is that the woman Leaving, leaves the home with atar and bukhur and so on Like in, even if there's no atar or no bukhur <coughs> Involved It's still more virtuous for the woman To pray in her home طيب. Having said that It is still mubah for the women To go out and witness the jama'ah and the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said do not pre- pre- prevent the servants of allah the female servants of allah from attending the masajid hadith of ibn umar radiyallahu anhu do not prevent the female um, believers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from attending the masajid we see from this hadith a certain issue which is what well, this woman, Jama'a has its reward in the masjid Taban. Like in her staying in the house, her staying in her home is what? From the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Taban, when we say sunnah, each according to how they can perform it. So the sunnah for women is to what? Perform in their homes. So for the woman that stays at home, she has attained or she has implemented the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the woman that attends the masjid may get a lot of reward. Which is better? Implementing the sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or gaining a lot of reward? Taban, if there's a difference. Huh? Attain, implementing the sunnah of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam طيب if women pray in jama'ah where should the woman stand? where should the imamah, the one that is leading the prayer where should she stand? in the middle, sah in the middle due to the other narration from Aisha radiallahu anha and Umm Salama in which they led women in their homes and they prayed in the middle of the women the sixth mas'ala in this chapter this mas'ala this chapter is, has a lot of mas'ail the fifth or the sixth masala is i'adatu salah repeating or establishing the prayer again the shaykh says wa idha sallaytuma wa qala idha sallaytuma fi rihalikuma thumma ataytuma al-masjid aw thumma ataytuma masjid jama'atin fasalliha fasalliya ma'ahum fa innaha lakuma nafila rawaha ahl sunan ahl sunan who are they the shaykh says ahl sunan 
رواه أهل السنة يعني is that the meaning رواه أهل السنة والجماعة the four imams of the sunnah not only four لكن in the other books of the sunnah أهل السنة طبعا initially إمام أبو داود النسائي إبن ماجة أن تغمذي لكن أوسع إمام أحمد رحمة الله عليه بالمسند بإمام أحمد طيب In this hadith there were two companions who came to the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the masjid or uh, naam they came to the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they sat in the back and when the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam finished the salah the jama'ah he taban faced the jama'ah and he saw two men that were praying and that were sitting in the back and he asked them why they were sitting where they were sitting so they said that they previously prayed where they were they prayed the jama'ah or they prayed the salah where they were and in the place that they were so they may have been traveling and then they prayed the salah already and then the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said even if you pray in what's traveling or pray in your place or another location ثُمَّ أَتَيْتُمَ مَسْجِدْ مَسْجِدَ جَمَاعَةٍ and then you come to a masjid in which a jama'ah is being established he said فَصَلِّيَا then pray with the jama'ah مَعَهُمْ pray the jama'ah with them فَإِنَّهَا لَكُمَا نَافِلَةٍ for verily for you it is a nafila. for you it is a nafila. طيب The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi commanded them to pray again. Why? What happens if a person has already prayed the Jama'ah, lakin, they're, praying in, they're sitting in the back whilst the Muslims are praying? What may happen? People might, seem, might think that these people are evil people, they're not praying with the Jama'ah. They might have suspicion and evil doubts and the shaitan may whisper to them so to avoid that the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded them to pray with the muslims pray with the jama'ah for you it is a nafila sahih that you've already prayed before like once you pray this salah then it is a nafila for you like you do not sit in the back and we see from that that we see from that, we understand from this hadith, we benefit from it that if there's a certain issue or a certain thing that may be a cause of fitting, may be a reason for a fitting to occur, or may be a reason for a person to increase the fitting, then it's better to stay away from it. For example, even if you're traveling and you're not fasting, if you're traveling and you're not fasting it's recommended to not sit in the local takeaway shop and eat whilst there are Muslims especially near t- towards the time of iftar when people are possibly collecting their iftar to sit there and eat why? people will automatically start questioning you is he not a Muslim? is he not this? Kada, kada. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whilst he was performing itikaf, one of his wives, Safiya radiallahu anha, came to him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he walked her out of the masjid and walked her to, towards her home. And then two companions saw the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then as soon as they saw the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his wife, they started to rush, fast paced her. Walk fast. And then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called them. And he said, Innaha Safiya. Verily it is Safiya. Nafiya had it is not anyone, but Safiya. Then they said, Ya Rasulullah, we would never or oh, yeah, not to you, yeah, we won't doubt you, we never doubted you, Ya Rasulullah. Okay, because they were shy of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they walked fast. Lakin it may be that shaitan may whisper a certain thing towards them, into their hearts. 
So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to cut off any sort of suspicion or waswas from shaitan, he said in Naha Safiya. So likewise we understand this benefit from the hadith. If a person is walking past the masjid and they've already prayed, it doesn't mean that they have to go inside the masjid and pray the jama'ah. This hadith refers to the person who's in the masjid already, who goes into the masjid. Taib. Like for the person who's already prayed in another masjid, if they're walking, up, walking past a masjid in which they're praying the jama'ah now, then it's not wajib for them to go in. And we see it, and even where we live, some masjids pray earlier than others. For someone that prays in a certain masjid, which they pray early, Salat al-Asr early, يعني, he may walk past the masjid which prays Salat al-Asr late. Even though he's prayed the same jama'ah, he's prayed that salah, Salat al-Asr. So for him or for her, it's not wajib, or for him, it's not wajib to go into the masjid and establish or pray with the jama'ah. It is only wajib upon the person who is already in the masjid. طيب. How do we combine this hadith? فَإِنَّهَا لَكُمَا نَافِلَةً Verily, for you it is a nafila. We understand from that that this person is going to pray this salah how many times? Twice. So if a person, the method, and if they were traveling and they prayed salat al-asr with salat al-zuhr and they come into a masjid at the time of asr, the hadith commands them to what? To pray. That means they've prayed Asr twice. In a hadith, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا تصلوا صلاة لا تصلوا صلاة في يوم مرتين Do not pray one prayer twice in any one day. And do not pray the same prayer twice in any one day. And in another hadith, لا تعادوا الصلاة The salah is not to be repeated في يوم in one day مرتين twice. How do we do jam' of these two hadith? The hadith that I've just mentioned and the hadith in the matan that Shaykh Sa'di mentions. The intention. The intention. Mm. Now that's the masala we're going to refer to in a minute. The, uh, uh, which one's more specific? In what sense is it specific? Ah. Okay, the one that's praying twice, why can't it be enough nafila for him? Mathala now, the first scenario when I said that he prayed Asr, or a person prayed Asr, command Asr with Dhuhr, and he comes into a masjid. The first hadith commands him to pray, sah? For him it's going to be a nafila. What's preventing me from praying Asr in a masjid and going home and praying Asr again? Can't it be a nafila for me? <laughs> that side, and to be honest I didn't even think of. Um, I did not think of. It can be khas to the person in the masjid, Sahih. What was your um, kunya? Hmm. Yeah. To be honest, that didn't come to my mind. Lakin, what, what came to my mind is what uh, what the scholars usually mention, which is that the first hadith or the second hadith, La tu salu salat fi magatain. Do not pray salah or la tu'ad salah is referring to waswas or is preventing waswas. So you find a lot of people or some people praying one salah for half an hour, repeating the same salah. And that is a waswas from the shaitan, whispering of the shaitan. And it not only happens in salah but even in wudu. So some people they walk into the masjid, go to the ablution area, Keep performing wudu over and over again to the extent when they come out you think that they perform ghusl because they keep repeating it's waswas from shaitan. So this hadith can be referred to to understand that it is waswas 
it is waswas whereby if a person has already prayed the salah then for him to not to not pray again for fear of waswas and the scholars usually say that when it comes to doubt shak and I'm not sure if we mentioned it in, when we were talking about sujood al-sahwi that when a person performs the ibadah they shouldn't look at the doubt they shouldn't look at shak for example we've just prayed salat al-maqrib sah you shouldn't say to yourself, did I pray maqrib? Did I have wudu? Did I have this? Did I have that? If it's after the salah, and you've already done it, or performed the salah, and you are 90% certain, or almost 100% certain that you've done what was required from you, from wudu, facing the qibla, and the conditions, and so on, and the, uh, the pillars of the salah, then it is not uh, permissible to leave off that salah that you prayed to pray again just because of waswas. Now, so that is a way of combining this salah. Another way is the way the sister mentioned, which is to say that this is khas or specific to the masjid and this is general to any other time. Tayyib. The next hadith. In this chapter, the Sheikh mentions a lot of hadith. The next hadith is, well, the seventh mas'ala in this hadith, in this chapter. The seventh mas'ala. Like in, because of time restrictions, we'll delay this mas'ala, the seventh one till, after we come back, inshallah, on the 5th of January, where we, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala.